you have a great history with India, designing the Delhi Golf Club. What does it feel like coming back here? Well, it's joy, really. That's the, what I feel. I haven't been for four or five years, and I was here last time very quick uh, to stay. And so this time, a few more days, and uh, it's a great pleasure to be back. Uh, the Delhi Golf Club is, in one way, really your trophy to Indian golf. What went on in your mind when you were designing it and, uh, you know, coming back to it uh, should bring back some of those memories? Well, I didn't do all that alone. I had uh, accomplices. Uh, some of your family was very, including the man himself, the great man, Barrett Ram. And uh, it was something missing from the world calendar. It should, there should be a golf tournament, a championship, international, in India, because for many other reasons too, uh, golf outside Scotland started in India right. in 1726, I think it was. And before America played golf, and before Australia played golf, India did. True. It made me feel very warm. You know, the Delhi Golf Club, as many would say, now that Tiger Woods has also played here off late, is a course that's truly unique. In, in most cases, people find it, uh, you know, a situation where uh, the, green, the, the fairways are fairly narrow. Uh, there are greens that are hidden. So it's amazing for people to play a course that's so different. <laughs> what do you think uh, was the reason for you to design it that way? Well, I didn't design it like that. I found it, found it like that, right. with its trees and turf. And uh, it really was part of nature. And I'm all for that, for the ecology aspect of golf. It's a very valuable part of our game that we play in the most beautiful surroundings always, don't we? We pick a forest or a lake or a beach or something like that. Right. To decorate it, make it pleasurable. When you look at India as a golf destination, what, what does India spell to you? You were talking about the fact that India has a big place in golf history, but how do you see it today? Well, it's lagging behind in the tourism states, the golf states. So it should do it with more golf internationally and by tourism than there is now. It's calling out for it because the golf courses are very natural in India uh, and they give a tingle to anybody who comes to play. At least it did me when I came. <laughs> and uh, there's a reward for coming here. Right. You know, uh, the, the fascinating part about the Delhi Golf Club is that um, the same person can play several shots over uh, on that course in the morning and play several shots under in the evening. It's a lot about the way you approach the game. And I do know that in history, uh, Mr. Thompson, you actually played a round of uh, 36 holes on Sunday when in the morning you were seven under and oh, six, un six over and in the evening you were seven under. How, how did you manage that? And how does any golfer deal with something like that? <laughs> Well, I'm really ashamed of what I did, but uh, uh, it all came good in the end, thanks to the people that didn't win. Uh, and uh, I wasn't wide awake, I was half asleep, I think. For some reason, I don't know what, what it was, really. Yeah. But um, it was one of golf, golf's lessons that you don't, it doesn't always go the way you plan. Right. And it didn't on that occasion. Golf lessons is absolutely true because um, it's, it's fairly unpredictable about what your next shot would be. But that sense of unpredictability also could mean that your best shot is yet to come. So do you think that as an individual, the sport has brought a lot for you uh, as a personality than you have given back to the sport? Well, you're, again, you're right. You, you have the right answers to all these questions you're asking me. Uh, but, um, well, I don't know. It, you know, it, some say that your character, your personal character comes out when you play golf because you can be cranky and irritable and un, unwilling and all that. And then you get 
bad breaks that you don't deserve, at least you think you don't deserve it. Mm. And, and yet, it's always there. And it always fascinates you when you, I've made a mistake. <laughs> You won the British Open five times. Uh, it almost, I feel like pinching myself to know that I'm actually sitting in front of you. You won the Indian Open three times. I mean, these things should make you not just proud, but I think Asia and Australasia proud of the fact that we produce such a legend out of this part of the world. What do you feel about the way Asia has seen a surge in the game? Well, uh, golf has come to Asia after a a beginning, a sort of a stumbling beginning in India. But um, it came after that was tossed aside and things. It came, frankly, with aff affluence. Golf is a relatively expensive game of go a game. And it came to Asia last in the world. Mm. And when the affluence came, came the golf right after it. And that's the, that's the, the picture of it worldwide and right. in history. Do you think India and China will change much about golf going forward? They're having a real argument amongst themselves right now because uh, the federal government uh, is not very happy with uh, golf. It takes up valuable land and one thing China doesn't have is land, <laughs> spare land. But uh, there are over 600 golf courses, I'm, I'm told, mm -hmm. that are in action right now. And there's some that fell foul of the authorities by having their holes bulldozed in because they didn't have a permit. Right. So it's sorting itself out. And perhaps we need to see uh, another government that supports golf. So you think governments have to be an integral part of supporting the game? Just so that it doesn't get in the way. That's when it can have a part. Right. Do you believe that golf must be speeded up? Do we need to change the format? Uh, from the time that you played, people were all about purists and they wanted the game to be 18 holes, full-fledged, long courses. Should it change? Well, when I was young, which was a long time ago, but everybody played fast. And a round of golf in a pair of people, two people, would, wouldn't be more than two hours. I tell you the truth, in Melbourne where I live, the final in the 1947 amateur championship was, uh, one player was 69 and one was 71. Wow. But it only took them two hours. That's fascinating. It's hard for me to believe that. We can, we can get back to that if, if the game insists upon it. Because they far, take far too long to get the putts in and <laughs> shots out of the rough and asking for advice. What do I do now? I'm in a terrible place. Are, are you in that case suggesting that golfers um, are unnecessarily making it lengthy today? <laughs> Just about, I'm, t I'm saying that, yeah. <laughs> they ought to get on with it quicker. I want to turn, turn back time into the Indian story for you. When you first won the Indian Open, what was it for you to win in a country like India? And what were your experiences like then? How did you feel about India when you first arrived? What were your, what were your experiences that you remember? Well, some of my lo long-term friends, uh, for instance, the... Englishman who was the head of Dunlop uh, Company, which was, had been in, in, in uh, Calcutta for a long time. He was keen to have a big championship here to sell more golf balls. <laughs> Companies work like that. Right. And so that there were individuals scattered about that wanted to do the, the push, to get it going and get it going quick. And see what the reaction is. And that's what we did. We mm. paraded before the public and they, I think, approved. So you, you think that um, the way India started out, that was a corporation-led activity through Dunlop. But then you came back and won the Indian Open twice again. What brought you back to India? Hey, well, <laughs> I won three times, but I think I lost about 20 times. <laughs> 
you, one doesn't win everything one tees off in. No, no golfer has ever done that. But one doesn't win five British Opens. And that is something that's a spectacular feat that you've been carrying on your arms. What did the British Open do for your life and your career? Well, don't forget that I lost 25 times. In all, I played 30 championships over the years, and 25 of them were not successful. But I, I like the way you always look at this and approach it like a golfer, where you are willing to count your losses more than your gains. So I want to bring you back to what was winning the British Open like for you? Well, it, it's planning, really, planning. I planned early in the year, back in January, to win in July, because <laughs> the championship was always played in July. And I stuck to that plan to, to get ready and then to follow it. And they don't seem to do that now. Mm. They, they look turning to the caddy, what do I do here? <laughs> mm. So tell me about that, because Indian players are learning how to present themselves onto international opportunities. What does it take to win global events? Is it, is it luck? Is it hard work? Is it practice? Is it sixth sense? According to you, what is it? Well, it's a bit of everything. Fitness, I think you've got to be pretty fit. And your brain ought to be very fit too, because it's, it's going to do the thinking. And there's a lot of thinking to do in a game of golf. Uh, and I think those things are very important. And, and self-reliance. I, I preach self-reliance to any of the younger players that ask me what, what's good about my game or bad. And I said, well, if you're thinking right, you're on the right track. 